Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the chords to Herbie Hancock's classic 16 bar funky blues, Watermelon Man. Everything you see on the screen is available as a PDF, link in the description where you get a chart and the chords. You'll also find there a link to my Patreon page. Now let's get on with it. So Watermelon Man dates back to 1962 and it's one of the few jazz standards which has a wider appeal beyond just jazz fans, I think because of the catchy riff. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you the chords firstly, then we move on to the harmony, and then I'll show you a way to go about comping those chords. Now before we get on to all of that, one of the unusual things about this jazz blues is that it's a 16 bar blues rather than your standard 12 bar. You see here's my chart on the screen, normally we'd expect our blues to end here in bar 12 and we go around again. We've got an additional 4 bars. If anything the additional 4 bars make it more fun to solo over. And here's the form again on the screen and one of the feature in this song is common to play bar 15 as a lead break. So you stop on beat 1 then the soloist solos through that bar rhythm picks up in the next bar. But we'll get to all of that. Now we're just gonna do a basic version of the chords and for that we're gonna need three chord shapes. So nice and straightforward. F7 off the A string, three note voicing like this. B flat seven off the E string, again a three note voicing. Move that up a tone, the same shape we have. C7, again also a three note voicing. And just to say, when you've got three note voicings of a four note chord, in this case, it's very typical to omit the fifth. So all of these chords are just comprised of the root, the third, and the flat seven. I'll run through the chords now, and for now, I'll just play one chord per bar just to keep things simple. So the first line, we've got four bars of F7 like this. We then move into the second line, and we've got two bars of B flat seven, followed by two bars of F seven. Now in the third line, we start alternating between two chords with each chord getting its own bar. And we go between C seven and B flat seven, and then we do that again. And then in the final line we have a bar of C7 and then on the next bar we're going to play B flat 7 but just play it on beat 1 so go B flat and then on beats 2, 3, 4 we're going to be silent so we need to mute our guitar. Then we're going to pick the rhythm up again for two bars of F7. So that's the chords deconstructed, let's put that all together, here it is. And as I said, you can get the chord shapes in the chart, link in the description. Now, let's think about the harmony. So this blues is in the key of F. If we were in key of F major, we'd expect the following chords. So chord one, F major seven, chord two, G minor seven, chord three, A minor seven, chord four, B flat major seven, chord five, C seven, chord six, D minor seven, chord seven, E minor seven, flat five. So we've got an F bass chord, we've got a B flat bass chord and a C chord, so we've got a one, four, five chords, but they're not quite as I just said there, because they're all dominants. So in a blues, it's very common to play chord one as a dominant. In some cases, you will play it as a major seven in some like the Parker, Charlie Parker blueses, but more often than not, we're gonna play it as just a dominant chord. So we would label that first chord one, seven, which means it's chord one, but as a dominant. We then move into the next line and we go to B flat. Now in the key of F you get B flat major seven, but common thing to do in the blues is uh, change that chord up to a dominant for the bluesy character and feel. Now there's a, another reason this works really well and it's to do with the notes that link between F seven and B flat seven. And it's very obvious on the guitar here with the shapes and I've deliberately picked them like this. The top note in that F7 chord is an E flat. That's the flat seven of the F chord. When you change chords, that goes down a semitone to the third of B flat, which is a D. So you get what's called the flat seven to the three resolution. So the flat seven of F is E flat, 
then as you change chords that note goes down a semitone to D which is the major third of the B flat chord so it kind of pulls you down into that chord if you like the other reason it also works is F7 in the key of B flat major is the fifth chord is the dominant so it would naturally lead you to B flat anyway so we've got chord one as a dominant moving to chord four as a dominant and then heading back to chord one as a dominant in the third line we're just alternating between chord five and chord four both as dom voice as dominants and in that fourth line we're going to go chord five to chord four have the lead break so you go b flat so it's like duh two three four nice place to have a bit of a lead break back to chord one so that last line it's all about resolving to chord one to start again now when you play this song with other people or you play over a backing track i think there's something by the nature of the chords in the last couple of bars that could trip you up and that's the fact that the last two bars are f7 and then the first four bars of the next chorus will also be f7 so you're going to end up playing six bars of f7 in a row because you've got the last two bars of say You'll run through here, then the first four bars of the next one. That's a really easy place to get lost. So mentally, as you're playing through the changes, you need to be thinking, right, we're starting again, beat one. Otherwise, it's very easy to get lost. A good rhythm section will make it obvious. They will punctuate that last bar to make it obvious that the form is kicking off again. But just to warn you, it's a place where things could fall apart if you're not careful. Now, onto how to play the chords. This isn't like a 12 bar blues that you want to attack with swing rhythm. That just would not do it justice. This song is quite groove based, quite funky. So we need to do something a bit different. Now, on my Patreon this month, on the second tier, the comping study, I've done something which is very reminiscent of the Herbie Hancock comping. Here's a little snippet of that. might want to check that out it's very fun to play but just to get you started here's a very basic way you could comp these chords and it's just with this rhythm one two three and one two three and and if I play it for you now I'm using my fingers to play it but you could use a pick Now my next couple videos will be related to this song with uh, my next upload being a chord melody kind of solo guitar arrangement of this tune and then the one after that will be about scales to use over this song so be sure to check those out and tune in for those if you've got any questions any comments you leave them below hope you've enjoyed today's lesson until next time you take care